Hi everyone. I thought I'd make another quick video as a follow-up to the one that I did about the uh, DPF and the oil level video. If you haven't seen that, click up here and uh, you'll be able to see it. The reason there's a follow-up is because a Volkswagen master technician contacted me really helpfully actually after I published that video because he's also got a uh, California Beach uh, T6.1 and he wanted to uh, share with me some knowledge which he's gained over the last couple of months but also uh, some experience and get me to test a few things with our own van. So this video is just about those key things. Now first and foremost the information in the uh, video that I published before around the DPF and potential fuel dilution of the oil and all of that stuff that does still stand and this video doesn't change that and um, what it does is it adds something new to that conversation. Um, now the Volkswagen master technician said that the DPF uh, regen and the fuel in the oil and everything else can happen on vehicles which are mostly driven in cities where there is a lot of failed DPF regens. So he said it doesn't happen on one or two, it happens if it's, um, or to a noticeable amount, it happens when there's a lot of DPF regens which have failed. So I said to him, well, that, that's all well and good, but why is it triggering in our van? Why is that uh, reduced oil level triggering in our van then? Because we do long journeys in our van. So what he explained was uh, in the T6.1, very specifically, I don't know why it's specific in the T6.1, but uh, he said that the oil does have a level of expansion which happens. Uh, and sometimes this can expand to the point where it triggers the reduce oil level um, uh, from the oil level sensor. Now I said to him, well, I just, I still don't understand. You've got to tell me some more. And he said that recently Volkswagen have changed the T, so with the T6.1, they've started delivering the vans to the centers uh, with the oil level at half on the dipstick. So in that hatch section in the middle, uh, they've been delivering them with half. And in his experience, what he's seen is that sometimes through a PDI process, those vehicles have been topped up to maximum when cold um, because they thought that the technicians working on them thought it was a mistake at the factory and they've been topping them up. And then when those vehicles have got warm, it's the, the, the oil level has expanded slightly in the vehicle and in the engine. And what that's meant is that it's gone over the tolerance level, which is in the oil level sensor, and triggered that warning. So I thought I'd do a bit of an experiment with our own van based on that information. So I took a cold dipstick reading, uh, and that cold dipstick reading is, it's around about half, probably slightly less than half, um, on the dipstick. I went out for a, uh, I think it was about an hour and 40 minutes driving, something like that. Oil temperature went up to about 105, 106 degrees C. Um, and I got back, turned the engine off and waited for five minutes just for the oil to go back into the sump. And I dipped the oil again. And guess what? The oil level was at the top of the hatch section on the dipstick. So that's actually expanded uh, by about probably 400 mil, something like that. Um, he said to me that the between the uh, top and bottom of the hatch, hatch section on the dipstick is about a litre. So I'd probably say it's probably expanded by about 400-ish, maybe 500 mil. Now I wanted to be absolutely sure that wasn't anything to do with dilution. So left the van overnight, left it cold in the morning, checked the oil again and it had gone back to the level which was cold the day before. So I, with our van, I can pretty much categorically say that there is definitely oil expansion that goes on um, with our van. And what I don't know, unfortunately, to round this video off, what I don't know is the oil level which was in our van cold when we picked it up from new. Because in my head, I'm thinking if that was at the maximum of the hatch section, then there's no wonder that it was triggering the reduce oil level light. Now, interestingly, the other couple of key points um, he mentioned to me, because I said to him, well, that's all well and good, but what, why didn't it trigger in the first 
you know, 50 miles or 60 miles? Why did it take a thousand miles? And he said that there is a different set of engine programming effectively from the engine management unit within that first thousand miles, um, which doesn't trigger those kind of lights unless they're extreme. So, uh, so it wouldn't do. And after that, it goes into its normal operating mode and obviously it's triggered it. Now, I, I, I think I feel quite satisfied now about the, um, uh, the expansion. So for me, I'm going to leave our van at the kind of half full on the hatch section. Um, it's, it's not triggered a light again since. It seems to be working absolutely fine. So I, I can't think what else to try really and, and how, how I can explain it any further. It seems to be working as it should do. Um, one thing he did say about the software updates, which is important to note as well, is that there's a difference between RDE1 engines and RDE2 engines. So RDE1 engines are the 199 engines um, and obviously the, the 150 engines, uh, there was an RDE1 version as well. Um, RDE2 engines are the 204 engines, so the later ones. I can't remember the exact date in uh, 2022 when it came in. Um, but he said that there is a software fix for RDE1 engines and that software fix effectively adjusts the tolerance level of the oil level sensor um, up a bit to allow for that expansion to take place in the oil and then not trigger the warning. Um, that update isn't available yet for the RDE2 engines um, at the point of this video, and it's what, the 23rd of October today, um, 2022, uh, sorry, 2021. So... Um, <sighs> That will explain why some people have had a software update and some people haven't, because it will be dependent on which engine you've got, whether it's available or not yet. But that's the reason for the software update, the master technician told me. So I think the moral of this really is if you've got a, if you've got a van on the driveway now, if you've got a flat driveway where you can check the oil, check it cold, see where the level is on your dipstick, um, check it hot, um, so get it up to at least 80 degrees C, on the oil temperature, turn the engine off, wait five minutes for the oil to drain back into the sump, and then make sure, um, obviously you, you check it there, see what the difference is, make sure it's been a good drive um, to get it nice and warm, and then check it again uh, when uh, the van's cold again, the same experiment that I did, you probably find the same results. Um, if you have a van now and your cold oil level is near the top of the dipstick, I would hazard a good guess that you're still going to be getting the warning messages. Uh, and the simple way of uh, talking to the master tech, the simple way of rectifying that is rectify the level of the oil in the engine, i.e. get it to the point where it's halfway on the dipstick and no further over. That allows for the expansion to take place and it won't trigger any lights. It's perfectly safe uh, is what he tells me. So that feels like the solution. There's one final step which I'm really tempted to do. Um, I'm really tempted to send away a sample of our oil in the van for oil analysis, which would tell us categorically what fuel dilution there is in there. It would tell me whether there's any diesel mixed in with the oil. It costs about 35 quid to do. I'm toying with the idea uh, because it feels as though it would kind of close this conversation off because I, I would then know whether we've had any fuel dilution in, in the oil at all. Um, I know that it's always going to have a very small amount, but um, just through the normal engine running, but it would close the conversation somewhat. So let me know in the comments below. Do you think that's something I should do? Is that worthwhile? Is it something you want to hear about to kind of close this conversation off? Um, I would um, disclose who the master tech is, but I've, I've, I, he shared all the information with me in confidence that I'd keep him anonymous. So Hopefully you can trust me on that and you can see that I'm sharing the information as much as I can. But his belief is that what I've told you in this video is the primary cause of that um, reduce oil level warning, not the DPF regens, because he said that only happens when it, the vehicles are used in stop-start cycles in towns and, and cities a lot, where you're switching the engine off and failing those regens a lot. So I hope this video has been helpful. Um, it fe feels as though I've read so much and talked to so many people about this issue um, since we've had it. Um, hopefully this clears a bit of it up for you. Uh, hopefully it sets your minds at ease a little bit. Um, so uh, hopefully that 
um, that's useful for you. Um, if you want to continue this discussion, you can do it in the comments below. Um, our in Instagram page is there um, and also our Facebook groups there as well. Come and join our Facebook group. It gives you all of the latest updates on what's going on with the channel and everything. Um, thanks very much for watching. If you like this kind of content, then please like and subscribe. And we'll see you again soon for some more California time.